I once took a bus ride from Bogota, Colombia to Medellin. It's about nine hours and you go from a fairly high altitude to a lower altitude. And in the last little bit, you go through a tunnel. It's a fairly long tunnel. And then you emerge on a highway on the side of a mountain and you look straight down, way down there, that's Medellin. You actually see a city from way up in the mountains and it kind of happens quickly as you emerge from the tunnel. And everybody that sees that for the first time, I'm sure goes, wow, that's breathtaking. <laughs> um, it, and it, it takes you by surprise the first time you've, you've done this. Uh, in fact, I've only done it once. I did it once in reverse, but um, I'm sure that it takes everybody's breath away the first time they see it. There are not that many experiences in life like that. Um, that really jerk you up out of the ordinary. Um, some people seem to not have that feel, that capacity to go, <gasps> to have their, not so much their mind blown, as their heart blown. They're sort of in contact with the numinous. Um, you know, you can see that, say, if you look up at the sky sometimes, if you're in a particularly storm-prone part of the world, and you see the sky and you go, wow, there's Mother Nature and all her rage and power and when you see the sky, the angry sky just before a storm. Um, or again, uh, on the same bus ride going from Bogota to Medellin, I once well, you know, saw the same uh, scene, sort of looking down, but I was looking at a rainbow into a valley. Now, I, I'd never seen a rainbow from above before. You can't even see them from planes. I, just, I was at the exact right at altitude and there was a rainbow below me. And it, that kind of blew my mind as well, twice in the same trip the numinous it's just the sort of thing that you go wow you know you're you're taken out of yourself you're humbled in a way what is that what is that feeling of suddenly being overwhelmed but in a um, slightly painful but overall profoundly positive way I mentioned long ago about the Russian word umileni where they, it, 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 I don't know of any other equivalent in any other language for that feeling, that feeling of awe um, mixed with feeling very small, very humble. You feel like you need to drop to a knee or something like that. Even if you, you don't believe anything remotely uh, religious about your experience, you're still sort of, wow. Um, what would you call that? Um, you know, again, I've used the term numinous before. Um, what is that place in your head where you can feel that, if you can? I'd say most people can. As I say, not everybody. I don't believe that my father can. Um, just doesn't seem to feel the need. I can feel it. What is that? What is that breathtaking feeling, I guess you'd call it? Um, when you're presented by something that is... You know, you get that feeling that I'm in, I'm in contact with something profoundly great, greater than myself, and maybe so powerful, um, so powerful an experience that I feel like I'm a different person for a temporary period. Um, I can see how feelings like that can lead to God, or God. <laughs> Um, to f some sort of conviction that there's something going on out there in the world that is bigger than me. Um, I tend to see that as something that's here, of course, just um, the outside stimulation triggered that. That's already there. It's already sort of laying dormant in you. Something is required to trigger it. You emerge from the tunnel, you see Medellin way down there, and you've never seen anything even remotely like this. It's a completely new experience. <sighs> that was in there. It wasn't Medellin and the mountains and the, the sunlight breaking through the clouds and the mountains onto Medellin so far down below you. Um, it's That was the trigger. The awe, the numinous, was within you. Let's say that you wanted to cultivate that feeling. You wanted to actually pursue that feeling. Let's say that 
I can see how people could get addicted to that feeling and say, wow, that's fantastic. I'm sure it does explain a lot of people's <laughs> problems with alcohol and things like that. You want to replicate that, and crudely speaking, you can do that, I guess, with drugs or whatever. But let's say you don't even want to do that. You just want to replicate the feeling itself, and you want to do it in a way that you can control the environment under which this takes place. Um, the obvious example, say, is music or poetry or art or things like that, where you, you just... Wow, you want to you wanna be blown away. Um, and you started to talk about that. I mentioned in an earlier video that I stretch a lot in the mornings and in the evenings. And as a result of this, I've come to understand, I think, at least from one perspective, where the Hindu concept of chakras come from in Hatha Yoga, in Tantric Yoga. Let's say I wanted to talk about that numinous feeling. The feeling that you might get, say, when you see the Parthenon at sunrise in Athens and you happen to be the only one there. Or if you, <clears throat> I don't know, um, if you've, you know, even something kind of every day, I guess, or even stereotypical, you're a tourist on London Bridge, you've never been there before in your life and you've all often thought that that would be a fabulous thing to do and you, it doesn't, let's say the first time you go there, it delivers. You want to pursue that feeling. You want to pursue that feeling of the numinous, of awe, of having your breath taken away, of being humbled. You'd have to develop a vocabulary to pursue that. Um, and you would talk about it, that feeling. You would talk about, you know, say you do just use the numinous as your term for, oh, wow. And then, you know, you just talk about it with the same people over and over again, and pretty soon you've got a little vocabulary that you've built up. And so, yes, yeah, so then you start, to, you start to treat the numinous as a real thing, as a real state. Even though among the people that you're discussing it with, it's understood that all you're talking about is an emotional or mental state, a feeling. Um, you tend to feel that actually throughout your entire body, um, but it's mostly mental or emotional. But, you know, you're... Is that people say your hair stands up on end, your flesh tingles, and stuff like that. Um, it wouldn't be long, if you ask me, before you started to develop an interesting mythology that, or not, I shouldn't say mythology, but terminology or lexicon that would have to be so elliptical in order to discuss these things, so parabolic, you couldn't actually come at these things and discuss them plainly and logically and clinically and get across to another person what it is you're trying to say. Um, my bus ride to Medellin has to be experienced for someone to fully understand it. Um, you can't just describe that to somebody or at least write it down. When you come out of the tunnel to Medellin, the view is spectacular. Well, once you've read that sentence a million times in various guidebooks, it ceases to have any meaning. But it doesn't matter how many times you've had that experience, every time you have a new one like that, it still has the same effect. So you'd have to come up with some sort of stronger language to tackle this kind of thing, this kind of experience. I can see, I can see a holy book or some kind of uh, uh, grimoire or whatever you want to call it, scripture, appearing as a result of your attempts to codify that kind of experience or, or ex explain or um, depict that kind of experience and the kind of experience you're working on, you're working on pursuing or cultivating. Um, none of this has anything to do with the supernatural or the religious. But to talk about it, you have to use symbols and parables. You have to talk about things parabolically, because when you go at it plainly, you, you can't express what you're trying to express. It starts to sound like religion, or at the very least, poetry and fiction and art. But the feeling itself is unmistakably real. I'm not talking about the scientific explanation for that feeling or what triggers it. I'm talking about the actual experience of being on the receiving end of that kind of feeling. That's a state that exists, if anything exists, and that's a state that's almost impossible to logically explain in terms of how, it, how the experience is. You can explain it by saying endorphins, you know, um, stimulating the nervous system, surprise, beauty, that kind of thing. 
But that doesn't really work, does it? You'd have to sing a song to get it across to people what it feels like, or paint a picture, or write a poem, or something like that. And then you want, to, as I say, you want to pursue this feeling as something of a, I don't know, not a discipline, but as, a, as an actual pursuit. Um, words start to fail, so you have to go beyond what actual written language can say. You have to be elliptical. You end up dabbling in things that are difficult to persuade other people are not religion, but they are real. These feelings are real. Um, I guess in a way I'm kind of moving towards something here in this 11th or 12th video in this series, and it's kind of another conception of godness that I've been fascinated by most of my life. <clears throat> what if God feelings are simply a way of describing that feeling and describe the normal or understandable human desire to feel that way as much as possible? It really is a profoundly good feeling, even though you can't always explain to anyone how good it feels. Because it might even look like you're in pain. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised if that were that's where religion itself came from, not just some shaman trying to terrify the tribes people into obeying him so he can live the high life and have all the wine, women, and song he wants. There may be actually something behind it that people actually get out of it by pursuing the numinous. I think that you can pursue that and be a hard materialist if you want. Um, but again, it starts to sound like religion and all kinds of warning bells go off when you get into that, when you, when you pursue the numinous, that sense of awe. Watch it, buddy. You're, you're going off the maps here. It's good to go here. You better understand the normal rules don't apply here. And you do get that feeling, I guess, of contamination of, hmm, I'm stepping out of the rational here. And I'm doing it kind of intellectually, not just sort of allowing music to do that to me. I'm actually saying, I want to put the cart before the horse. I want to have that, I, I want to get that feeling. First, I want that feeling, and then I'll find out whatever ways I can get that feeling. What are the means, the path to that feeling? Once you go on that route, I think, and I've never actually pursued it as a lifestyle myself, but I think that that, the, the decision to pursue beauty, art, um, the numinous, the profound in life, the conscious decision to do that must be near identical to the decision to pursue a spiritual, quote unquote, spiritual life. And you can do this without any prior or any prior belief in the supernatural and any desire to ever have anything to do with the supernatural. When you do get into it, suddenly it gets weird as, as you can imagine, or more weird than you can imagine, because it does seem to lead you down that path, off the rational path into the irrational, even if it's not completely irrational, i.e. belief in the supernatural. You don't really know where you're going anymore. You're feeling your way emotionally, I guess. How do you describe that feeling or how do you codify that pursuit without religion? I'd say it's possible, but inevitably it's going to sound like religion. And it's possibly, there's a strong risk it's going to feel like it when you get into it. And it, you know, you can almost get the feeling you're, you're going to be swallowed up by this. I can pe see people of a particularly rational turn of mind being frightened by this. <laughs> um, if you're used to being fairly grounded in logic uh, and mathematics and hard science and stuff like that, I can see people becoming unnerved by their experiences with the numinous. Profoundly unnerved, even, when your E equals MC squared or 2 plus 2 equals 4 becomes an absolute irrelevancy. 
Um, and yet that feeling exists. It's you can't actually deny that people are not feeling that. That's why I asked in the previous video, is your inner life real? I say it is. I believe that it is as real as anything is. When I came out of the tunnel in Colombia, 10 years ago or whenever it was, and my breath was taken away and I felt that tingle go through my entire body and I got the butterflies in my stomach and everything and it was a wonderful, strange feeling. That experience happened. And Ever since then, I've been failing to portray that experience. You gotta use ellipse and art and even music, the intuitive, the numinous, whatever, poetry to describe it. Sounds like religion, it's quite a dilemma.